there, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pearl Together. And in this week's technique video, I wanna talk about the short row heel that is the shadow wrap. The shadow wrap short row heel is a really good alternative to other types of short row heels, such as the fish lips kiss maybe, or the German short row or the wrap and turn. There's all these different types of doing a short row and the shadow wrap is just a different technique of doing a short row heel. So there are some fundamental differences, however, um, between, for example, between the short row heel and the fish lips kiss, which is a paid for pattern. It's very, very good. It's extensive. Um, but the reason that I don't do a specific tutorial for that one is it's a copyrighted pattern. So out of respect for the designer, I wouldn't do that. But there are some differences between the shadow wrap and the fish lips kiss. And I'm addressing this because I get asked quite often about that. Um, the shadow wrap heel is actually symmetrical. It is truly symmetrical, whereas the fish lips kiss has um, a little extra row on one side. It's not a big deal and it's not something you'd ever really notice, but it is not truly symmetrical. However, the fish lips kiss is a little bit deeper of a heel cup. So if you have um, an issue with uh, high instep, for example, you might find that helpful. The shadow wrap is easy enough to tweak for that. So you may just want to compare them both and see which fits you better. But in this week's video, we're going to talk about specifically the shadow wrap heel, how it works, and how to create those twin and triplet stitches. So before we get too far into that, I want to big, give a big public thank you to four new patrons we've had recently. So a hearty thank you for supporting the channel to Mary Grace. Grace, Pamela, Vanessa, and Yvonne. Thank you so much for becoming patrons of Pearl Together. I appreciate your support more than you can ever know. And that's what helps keep these videos coming to you each and every week. So if you'd like to learn how to become a patron, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together and see what I offer for your small monthly pledge. So thank you so much for supporting Pearl Together, the channel and the community. Okay, let's get started with the shadow wrap heel. Here I have my little sock sampler, and sometimes I do this just to try out a new heel, and I can absolutely put it on my foot and see how it fits without having to knit an entire sock. So all I've done here is just done a, you know six or eight rows of, I think this was six rows of ribbing just to keep it from curling. You could do fewer than that. It's just, again, it's just a sampler to see. Um, if you're trying out a new heel and you want to do that. And then I just did, I think 12 or so rows of stock net stitch. So now I'm gonna add some contrasting yarn so I can see what's gonna go on. I just have this partial leftover bit. And I don't tie a knot or anything, I'm just gonna start knitting with this. So when we do a shadow wrap heel, it can be done for toes toe up socks or cuff down socks either way same with the fish lips kiss it works either direction so the first thing i'm going to do is just knit all the way across here so i'm going to knit all the way across to the last stitch on the needle now i'm going to twin this first stitch so the stitch that's down below here so not the stitch on the needle, but the stitch that's right below. I'm going to lift the right leg of that, and I'm going to put it up on the needle with the host stitch. Okay. So the one I'm lifting up, I'm going to call the mother because she's going to have twins. So I'm going to knit right into that. Then I'm going to put that back onto the left needle. So now you can see that she has fraternal twins. So this is the mother stitch, and there's two twins. Okay, then after I do that, I've put that back on the left needle so now I can turn my work. I'm just gonna purl back to the last stitch where we're gonna do the exact same thing on the purl side. When we get to the last stitch, the, you know, obviously this is the stitch we started with, so it's pretty loose. So I like to just take the tail over here and hold it with my thumb to kind of provide a little tension. Now, what I wanna do here is the same exact thing. I want to lift this the right leg of this stitch, which on the back side becomes the left leg because you're looking at it from the back. So I'm just gonna slip that stitch over and then I'm gonna lift this stitch up and leave it on the left hand needle and I'm gonna purl into that to make the twin. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Then I'm gonna slip them both back over to the left. So now I can turn my work. 
So we're just going to do a series of these short rows, back and forth, back and forth. The row gets a little shorter every time, and it makes a, a triangle. We're knitting one less on each side, so two fewer stitches each time we go back and forth with each set of knit and purl back and forth. So that's what's going to create the first half of our heel. Okay, so you're going to knit over now to and stopping just before the twin stitch that we made earlier. So we're almost there. Alright, you can easily see the twin stitch that we made before. So we're going to do the same thing. I'll show you again. You're going to grab the right leg of the stitch below the one that's on the needle. Grab the mother's right leg. Lift that up on the left hand needle and knit right into that. I give that a little tug to loosen it up and put that back on the left needle. There you go. Now you've made a twin. Turn your work and purl back. All right, I'm one stitch before the twin, and again, I want to get to this lower stitch, and I want to knit into the right leg of it, which is the left side on the reverse, on the purl side. So I'm going to slip this over as if to purl, go in and pick up that stitch, and purl right into that. Okay, then I've made my twin, and I want that to be back on the left-hand side so that I can turn my work and be ready to knit across. So we're just going to keep doing that, those pairs of twins on the knit side and on the purl side until you reach the number of stitches that you'd like to have in the center of your heel. Let me show you what I mean. All right, I have this different sock sample, and you can see where I've done the short rows back and forth, back and forth, going all the way up. And these top stitches... Um, I believe I left 10 on this one because I had a total here of 28 across. So approximately a third of my stitches will be the back of my heel. So you can see I've done all these short rows across here and here, and I've paired, you know, just like we're doing now. And then I've left this. So you might look at your stitches per inch your gauge and decide, I want this to be an inch or an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half, depending on how narrow your heel is and what would fit you. And then you decide that, make sure you have an even number of twin stitches on each side here. Okay. So I'm just going to continue going back and forth, making my twin stitches until I have the number I want in the center. And for me, that will be 10 again. So since I have 28 stitches across here, I cast on 56. This is um, DK. This is thicker. So I have 56 cast on for my sample. If you're doing 64, then you would, and you still want a 10 in the middle, then you'd have 11 on each side because that would equal 32. So for me, I'll have nine on each side, which is 18, plus the ones in the middle. So that's my 10 in the center. So hopefully that makes sense. Always, as always, be sure to leave a comment down below if you have a question or anything is confusing. So I'm just going to carry on doing my twins. And my paired twinning. That sounds funny. Paired twins. Pairs of twins. Turn my work, pearl back, do the same thing. So when I am, have completed that, I will end this first sock half. I will end on the purl side. So I'll continue doing that, and I'll be right back. All right, I finished all my pairs of increases, or my pairs of short rows, not increases, but my pairs of short rows, and I do have my 10 unworked stitches in the center. So again, that could be eight or 12, whatever you need for the heel width. And it depends on, you know, whether you're knitting an adult size sock or a child size sock or whatever works for you. So I'm simply going to knit across these 10 stitches until I come to this first one that is a twin. There's no real counting um, in this heel, short row heel, except for, you know, just making sure that you have the the correct number of twins on the sides and the correct number of center stitches. Otherwise, it's really easy to just, you know, notice what's going on and to see that. Okay, I've come to the first stitch that I twinned, and I'm just going to knit right into that as if you're knitting two together. So that was easy. And now what we need to do is have a way to 
do the same thing with this mother stitch, she's going to have another child and we're going to make a triplet. So that way we can turn our work and go back the other way and start building the second half of our heel. So we're going to do the exact same thing and go into this mother stitch, same as before, lift that up onto the left needle, you know, hold these two first twins out of the way, and then they become triplets. And we're going to put that triplet back on with its siblings. So now we have three stitches coming from the mother. So we have a triplet. And now turn your work and purl back to your first twin stitch on the purl side. And that's how we're going to make build the second half of the heel by creating triplets. So again, we can just purl right on back. You don't have to count. You can see what's going on. You're just going to read your knitting and here I am to the first triplet, or sorry, my first purl twin. I'm going to purl into that. We don't want to do anything with that first one because we just want to lengthen our row at this point. Now we're going to slide these purl wise over to the right hand needle and again pick up the mother stitch, purl into the mother stitch, and then slide all three of the siblings back over to the left. Okay, we got to keep the siblings together. So turn your work and we're going to keep on doing those pairs of short rows until we've made triplets out of all of the twins. All right, now when we come to the triplet that we have before, we're going to knit three together. We knit all the triplets together and create one stitch. All the triplets together, pick up the mother, being careful not to split the stitch, put it on the left hand needle, hold these out of the way a little bit so you don't accidentally knit into one of the siblings. Slide that over to the left, turn your work, and purl back. Now you're going to be purling back and looking for that first set of triplets so that we can knit the triplets together and then make triplets out of the next set of twins. So hopefully all that makes sense. I'm just going to continue back and forthing until I have come to the very last twin on each side. All right, one more time. I'm going to purl into the triplets and make them one stitch, okay? And then I'm going to slide the twins back to the right so that I can pick up the mother and purl to make my triplet. Slide the siblings, all three, over to the left needle and turn your work. All right, I'm going to continue doing that until I only have one twin left on each side. As I'm going back and forth, one thing that occurred to me, if you're a newer knitter and you're lifting this up, it might be kind of tight. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, kind of not knitting too tight. You don't want to strangle hold on this because you do have to stretch that mother stitch a little bit. So when I'm knitting into this, I'm kind of leaving a little bit larger loop. Um, it's not... It's not super loose, um, and I, you know, but I don't want to yank on it and snug it up too tight because I am going to have to knit into all three of these when I come back. So you might just be mindful um, of your tension and just make sure you're relaxed. And you know, again, you don't want to loosen sloppy, but you don't want everything really, really tight because you know you're going to have to knit into all three of those triplets when you come back. All right, I've gone back and forth and back and forth, and I have one twin stitch here and one triplet here. So I'm just going to continue doing the exact same thing until I have made triplets out of all of the stitches. So everything will be symmetrical and we're back down to the same starting row and we can return to knitting in the round. You'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. All right, at the very end here, we're going to simply knit into those triplets same as we have been and we're going to make a triplet out of the last twin stitch we have on the needle. So we want everything to be symmetrical and we want to be down to the same row level that we started with so we don't have any gaps or holes there right in the corner. So I'm going to turn my work, purl back, 
and make a triplet out of my last twin stitch on the purl side. So everything is symmetrical, it's all the same. And then we can return to knitting in the round with the main color. And we have the same number of rows on each side of the heel. So don't worry that your twin on this side has uh, a fraternal triplet, that's okay. Obviously, if you're doing this heel not in a contrasting color, it would all be the same. But that is one thing I like about short row heels is that you can not, inter you know, if you're doing a stripe pattern, it doesn't interrupt your stripes. All right, I'm back to my last triplet on the purl side. So I'm just gonna purl all of those together. And now again, because I joined my contrasting color here, this is a little bit wonky. I label not long enough tail that I can kind of just wind it around my pinky and secure it. Um, so again, I'm gonna slide those over to the right hand needle and I'm gonna use the mother stitch here to make a, another sibling. Slide those back turn my work and now I'm ready to return to knitting in the round. Okay, my main color is back here. And what I want to do now is, uh, I did that out of habit, but really what I wanna do is put all of these triplets back on the left needle. I'm gonna grab my main color. I'm gonna cinch this up a little bit. And I'm gonna get a hold of my main color and I'm just gonna resume knitting in the round. And then we will weave in our ends and deal with any uh, resulting gaps that may occur with this being a little bit loose. We'll deal with that when we weave in our ends. So all I did was knit into the triplets and I'm gonna give that a pretty good little tug because I don't want any gaps or holes or ladders. I'm gonna knit into the second stitch and also give that a good little tug. And then I'm just gonna resume knitting in the round with my main color. I'm sure there are other ways to go about this. Um, this is just how I choose to resume knitting with my main color. If you were knitting this all in a solid color and you didn't have any contrast, then what I would suggest is that you would finish your triple stitch here and then you would slip it to the right hand side and then you would then you would just start knitting in the round and you would knit that last triplet as you came back around to it. But since I'm doing a contrast and I'm resuming with my main color, I don't want to have to do that and then cut and move the main color to the other side. I hope that makes sense. As always, be sure to, you know, if you need some clarification and what I just said is confusing, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to, to sort that out for you. So I'm just knitting across normally. And when I come to my last triplet, I'm just gonna knit them all together and resume knitting my magic loop and knitting in the round. So there we go. We have our last triplet finished. My magic loop's pretty short for this. Um, there we go. And I'm ready to resume knitting in the round. And I've got my heel. Let me show you my heel. Isn't it cute? I have my heel done. Let's zoom out a little bit. So there is my shadow wrap heel. Now I'm gonna uh, knit a few rounds so you can see what that looks like. And again, if I have a high instep, there's a, several things you can do to, to make this a better fit. As you're knitting from the toe or the cuff, coming from either direction, you can do some increases. If you needed to have rather than 28 stitches or 32, if you need to have 36 or even 40, if you're knitting in a light fingering and your gauge is really, you know, if you have many stitches per inch and you need more, you can do some increasing as you're approaching. And I would kind of do that gradually, depending on the slope of your top of your foot. You could increase, then, you know, knit five rows, do another increase, paired increases, and do another five rows. So by paired increases, what I mean is where you have your natural natural needle junction, whether that's magic loop or DPNs or two circulars, you would do, um, you know, knit two, two stitches before the end and do a make one or a lifted increase. 
knit one, change needles, and knit one, then do your increase. So hopefully that makes sense. And then you knit across and you do the same thing on this side. So you'd have some paired increases that are going up and increasing the stitch count. The more stitches that you have to work in your heel, the deeper your heel will be, and the more rows you'll have this way as well. So that might be beneficial. Um, you can also choose to do the heel across more than 50% of your stitches. So as with anything, it just takes some time to work out what is best for you or your sock recipient. All right, let me knit a couple more rounds and then you can see what this is all gonna look like once we get it together. Okay, you can see that I'm back to knitting in the round again and I'm gonna finish out my sample. This makes a really nice heel. And as long as you do, you know, snug it up and when you join it back in the round, just make sure that you give that first and second stitch a good little tug. There's not any holes or gaps, so I really appreciate that. And I like that it's symmetrical too. You're doing the exact same thing on both sides. So that's really nice. And there's not a, you know, a weird little jog there. So that's the shadow wrap heel. I hope you've enjoyed this week's technique video. If you have questions about the shadow wrap heel, feel free to drop a comment down below or reach out in the Facebook Pearl Together group or the Ravelry group, either way. All right, thank you so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and all that. All right, see you next time. Happy knitting.